The demand for the first of the NVIDIA GeForce 30 series graphics cards, the RTX 3080, was truly outstanding, with gamers flocking to buy the game-changing graphics card. The RTX 3080 is in such demand because it delivers smooth frame rates at 4K with gorgeous ray trace graphics, yet it costs a fraction of the previous generation RTX 2080 Ti. And now it's the turn of the even mightier RTX 3090 to redefine what a high-end graphics card can deliver. This new card is based on the same Ampere architecture and GA102 GPU as the RTX 3080. For an in-depth look at Ampere, make sure to watch our earlier video on the RTX 3080 over on our YouTube channel. Now, whilst both cards fundamentally have the same features, the specs are very different, with everything turned up to 11 on the RTX 3090. For instance, the CUDA cores are increased from 8,704 to 10,496, the tensor cores from 272 to 382, and the RT cores from 68 to 82. RTX 3090 also gets a wide memory controller of 384 bits versus 320 bits with a whopping 24 gigabytes of the next generation GDDR6X memory versus 10 gigabytes. Now, while 24 gigabytes is complete overkill for gaming, it's very useful for compute applications such as deep learning, as it allows data scientists to use more efficient large batch sizes or artists to render larger, more complex scenes. As such, especially considering how fast the RTX 3080 is, it's perhaps better to think of the RTX 3090 as the replacement for the Titan RTX and the RTX 2080 Ti. We put the GeForce RTX 3090 card through its paces up against the lower spec RTX 3080, plus the three fastest previous generation GeForce RTX 20 series cards, the Titan RTX, the 2080 Ti and the 2080 Super. As these were all high-end graphics cards, all of the benchmarks were run at the highest quality settings, with all the eye candy dialed up to the max at two different resolutions, 2560 by 1440 and 3840 by 2160. All of the cars were tested with the latest 45.38 NVIDIA driver using a fresh install of Windows 10 Home. As the RTX 3090 supports a new PCIe 4 interface, we wanted to see how much impact, if any, using a PCIe 4 motherboard would have. After all, PCIe 4 has double the bandwidth of PCIe 3. This could have an even bigger impact on what sort of system is best for an RTX 3090 than you might first realize. And this is because right now, only AMD makes PCIe 4 motherboards and CPUs. So for this reason, we started off testing the new RTX 3090 on three different platforms. One AMD with PCIe 4, another AMD with PCIe 3, and finally an Intel with PCIe 3. You can see the key specs of each of these test systems on screen now. So how much difference does PCIe 4 versus 3 really make to the RTX 3090? Well, unlike the RTX 3080, where we measured no appreciable difference, the RTX 3090 did run slightly faster on PCIe 4. The key word here, though, is slightly, as the speed was only 3%. Such a small difference that you'd be hard-pressed to spot it without the benchmark tool telling you so. Even so, the, this points to what we mentioned in our review of the RTX 3080, that as games grow larger and more demanding, PCIe 3 will start to limit performance. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was one of the first games to add support for DXR and DLSS, so we were keen to see how the new RTX 3090 performed in this title. In traditional rasterized mode with a bucket load of anti-aliasing, we saw a speed of up to 42% from the RTX 2080 Ti to the RTX 3090. And with DXR enabled, a 38% increase, two very worthy speed ups. Clearly, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is no challenge for the RTX 3090 at 1440p. We then upped the work for the graphics cards by increasing the resolution to 4K. Once again, the RTX 3090 proved supreme, 15% higher frame rates than the RTX 3080, which is an already incredibly fast card. The main takeaway from this, even 4K isn't really much of a workout for the RTX 3090. More on this a bit later. 
Metro Exodus remains one of the most challenging games to run at a smooth frame rate. Whilst the RTX 2080 Ti can play the game well at 52 frames per second with DXR ray tracing turned on, the 3090's frame rate of 79 is positively silken. Metro at 4K is also no match for the RTX 3090, with its average frame rate of 59 frames per second well above any other card and in a league of its own. For instance, with DXR ray tracing enabled, it was an astonishing 51% faster than the RTX 2080 Ti and a good 20% faster than the RTX 3080. We also ran 3D Mark Time Spy Benchmark on all of the cards. Now, despite being a synthetic benchmark rather than a real game, Time Spy is popular with gamers as it's so easy to run, so it's definitely worth including here. The results are output as a score, with a higher number indicating faster performance. Once again, the RTX 3090 proved massively faster than the RTX 2080 Ti, notching up a 34% higher score. This is a massive boost gen on gen and echoes up the fantastic speed ups that we saw in the real games that we benchmarked. The new RTX 3090 has a TDP of 350 watts compared to the 260 watts of the RTX 2080 Ti, so it should come as no surprise that its real-world power draw is higher too. Our test system drew a peak of 493 watts from the wall, a lot more than any contemporary graphics card, so you will need a hefty PSU to run the RTX 3090 at its best. Even so, the performance on offer is so spectacular, we're inclined to forgive the power-hungry nature of the RTX 3090. The first NVIDIA 30 series graphics cards, the RTX 3080, rewrote the rules of what to expect from a sub £1,000 graphics card, delivering high frame rates at 4K even with gorgeous DXR ray tracing enabled. The RTX 3090 is another game-changing graphics card, although perhaps simply because it launched after the RTX 3080, it doesn't seem quite so revolutionary. After all, with the RTX 3080 providing so much higher performance at 4K and UW QHD resolutions than the RTX 2080 Super, is it really worth spending all that extra cash for the RTX 3090? Well, the answer to that, of course, is that unlike consoles, which are resolution locked and are a fixed hardware platform for several years, gaming PCs, on the other hand, can never have enough performance. This, in turn, drives games developers to invest in superior graphics, which in turn requires ever more powerful hardware to render smoothly. What's more, with 8K monitors and TVs already trickling onto the market, with more scheduled for release in late 2020, the RTX 3090 could usher in a new era of ultra-high resolution gaming. We really wanted to try out 8K gaming for ourselves, but unfortunately we couldn't get hold of an 8K monitor in time for the RTX 3090 launch, so it is something we will follow up in a later video. In the meantime though, if you match an RTX 3090 with a 4K or UW QHD monitor, you can enjoy outstanding performance. For instance, in today's games, the RTX 3090 is a good 15-20% to 20 faster than the RTX 3080 and up to 40% faster than the Titan RTX. What's more, the RTX 3090 is priced more or less the same as its direct predecessor, the RTX 2080 Ti, and far lower than the Titan RTX. So despite its high cost, it can be argued to be comparatively good value for money. Scan sells multiple NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 graphics cards from a wide variety of manufacturers. Although like the RTX 3080, supply is expected to be tight for some time after launch. Alternatively, if your PC is getting a bit long in the tooth, then why not treat yourself to an RTX 3090 powered PC from 3XS Systems? Follow the links in the description to find out more.